Hey, this is Dominic, and this is your home for the cutting edge conversations on optimizing your personal performance, lighting up your sex life, and living a purpose driven life of your own design. These are the topics that Dominic and I have both struggled with in our own lives and still don't always get right. This is Brian. Welcome to the Great Man Podcast. Yeah, buddy. It's the final countdown. Here we are. How you doing there, man? Quick check. Virtual check-in. face to virtual face. Our last podcast together. Here we go, man. This is what it's all about. Four years. You know, four years ago, almost to this day. So we're recording on December 6th. It was December 3rd of 2018 when you and I were recording. This is before the podcast had even launched. And we were sitting at my living room table. And all of a sudden, your eyes darted outside to my porch and you go, holy shit, because <laughs> on my balcony was a hawk. Now, I live in New York City. We have pigeons, right? Like we don't have hawks. This thing was a glorious, majestic, badass hawk. And we both got up, walked over to the window. And as soon as we got close, like the thing flew away and we were like blown away for a moment. And we were about to turn our backs to go you know, back to the table to record. The hawk comes back with the remains of like a mangled pigeon that it just had torn limb from limb. And it was sitting on the railing of my balcony, just devouring this thing, looking straight at us. <laughs> yeah, it, it didn't leave because it was scared of us. It left to go get food and then came back and was like, I own this balcony now. It definitely owned that balcony. And I'm not even fucking with you. One week ago, a hawk landed on my balcony. No way. And I wasn't quick enough to pull out the phone to, and I haven't, we have not seen a hawk here in, wow. this, in those four years, but almost to the day it came back. So that was one of our more memorable moments recording together. Yeah. I remember you, you took that as a very spiritual sign to be like, this is, we're going in the right direction. <laughs> Here we are. You're like, it's a hawk. Do you know what this means? I have a feeling that you researched for at least three hours after that about what the meaning of a hawk landing on your balcony in New York City is. And I think it was good. It was, it was do a podcast. I Googled it and whatever the first search was that came up, it said <laughs> something it. like you guys, and, and as long as it affirmed, it affirmed my belief that we were doing the right. And I think it said something like, this is a message from the heavens that you're on the right path. I was like, yep, yeah, that's good enough. I love that. Okay. So we're on, we're on the right path then according to the Hawk schedule to close the podcast now. It's actually quite interesting. If you think about it from a bookend, you know, the Hawk cameth. The hawk arriveth again, and we're wrapping things up. I know we talk a lot about don't lone wolf your life, but there might be a hawk, a hawk thing in here in the near future. If you can come up with something pithy, man, I'll put it on a t-shirt. Okay. But dude, before we get into all the sappy stuff and you know reminisce about our favorite episodes and lessons that we've learned and share some of the incredible experiences that men have been reaching out with um, when they heard that the podcast was coming to a close. I want to give a quick update on our dopamine detox. And for anyone who hasn't listened to the second installment of this six-part series, we did an episode on 11 things to know about dopamine, how to detox and how to build your baseline, you know, so for your bold move. And one of the things that you and I decided to do is take 30 days of no masturbation because what would a closing episode be here without us talking about jerking off in some way, right? And I'm on day 25 or something. You're well past 30. But there was a post on Instagram moments before we hit the record button from Dr. Amy B. Killen. Oh, one of our best episodes. Right. She's a friend of the show. She's been a guest a couple of times. Uh, Her most infamous episode we titled How to Keep Your Dick Healthy. Yes because she's a doctor, an MD of regenerative medicine. And the post and the the research that she published today is causing me to question the intelligence of our no masturbation policy. Here, here's what I mean. Oh, great. In a well-known Welsh study, they followed 918 men for 10 years and found that those men who had the highest frequency of orgasms one to two times a week, had a 50% reduction in all-cause mortality compared to men with the lowest orgasmic frequency. On close analysis, they found that each additional 100 orgasms per year reduced 
the total mortality by 36% in men. Now, I just want to remind you that when I was jerking off feverishly, I didn't have Lyme disease. (laughs) And since I've gotten this thing under control, my physical health has taken a deteriorated state of black hole proportions. I'm wondering if I have this backwards. Should I be jerking off every day for 30 days to regain my health? Bri, um, you want to wait? Let's let's go by the book here. And in no place did Amy B. Killing say, let's jerk off every day. She said twice a week, which I think is is a more reasonable I don't know, I don't know how you went to seven times <laughs> seven times a week but <laughs> well she said she should for each week is okay for every additional 100 orgasms per year reduce the total mortality by 36% in men i mean there's a case to be made for if you want to live forever <laughs> how many extra hundreds of orgasms per year what well, that sounds like once a day you're right <laughs> if you're if you're just doing additive math this is just <laughs> So, and, and Dom, also regarding the dopamine, just to be clear, the rule was no jerking off. Like, and, and it was the intentionality with which we allow an orgasm to come to life, right? I think is the important piece. So I am not, just to be clear, I am not abstaining from orgasm, but I am also not jerking off. Oh, wait a minute. This is so, see, because you're in relationship. Right. I'm not. My 30 days is much more difficult than yours, pal. Well, one may argue that. One may argue the other side. That's like you, you're you not in partnership. Therefore, you could have multiple partners and still get seven orgasms a week with whoever you want. <laughs> I'm not sexually active right now. So these 30 days have been without sexual satisfaction, wow. my friend. I'm sorry about your mortality rate, Dominic. So, so it seems like my mortality rate has taken a hit over these last 30 days. However, my dopamine levels are at an all-time high. And the reason why, just in case if you you haven't listened to the episode, building up your dopamine baseline by bypassing some of those like pleasurable activities like grabbing your phone or watching two episodes of Netflix or jerking off watching porn, by abstaining from those, you end up building the baseline and building your hunger and motivation. So my motivation is at an all-time high, but it sounds like my days on this planet are are ticking down. I I I don't know. Just a little bit quicker. Yeah, I don't know how to work that one out. Anyway, here we are, my friend. We're at the last episode. I'm going to be doing a final sign-off, just a solo episode with the crew here, but this is our last ride together. So I know that we've both done some research and you know looked back at these last four years of episodes. Uh, you came up with a couple of lists of favorite episodes, categorized our podcast into the types of episodes that we did. So I think we're going to hit a number of things right? Like favorite episodes, lessons learned, share a few testimonials slash experiences for men. And I think we also want to talk about this. This is, I think this is going to be an interesting one, how to get the attention of your favorite podcaster or, you know, influencer, because sitting in the seat for the past four years, you know, we have an audience and I've had a chance to, you know, hear from, you've had a chance to hear from a lot of different people who reach out And there just seems to be some who know how to reach out in a way that stands out and others where it doesn't, you know, it kind of just gets lost in the shuffle. So being in this seat has helped me to understand if I ever wanted to reach out to like the Tim Ferriss's of the world or the Tom Bilyeu's, two men that I admire, how to get their attention. So we'll hit that somewhere along this conversation today as well. Awesome. I have a quick story here, Dominic. I've mentioned a couple of times in the podcast that Rebecca, my wife, her father had a stroke back in a year ago in December. And so he just made a big transition to moving from Philadelphia to just down the street from Becca and I here in Brooklyn Heights. And he just moved in this weekend. So he's getting to know some of his, his fellow people living in this retirement community. I was there uh, like picking him up, dropping him off this weekend. And I happened to be wearing my Great Man Within t-shirt. Nice. And so one of the guys asked me, like, like oh, it looks like you're a great man. <laughs> like, tell me, what, <laughs> what's that all about? And I had a big smile on my face that I co-host a podcast with a, with a friend of mine. And he said, well, what's it about? And you have a story, Dominic, about what it's about. I, I have a story about what it's about. But I was curious, as we came into this final episode, 
what have we really talked about? What are all the themes and topics that we've really hit? Because it's broad. And I think something that's been really beautiful about when we started this, there wasn't a commercial intention associated with the podcast. It was just, let's share our experiences, what we're learning, and see where it goes. So I did a little homework on the categories that we've covered over these last four years. 11 categories. I'm going to read all of them really quick, and then we're going to hit what are the top five. Okay. So here they are in no particular order. Leadership, relationships, purpose, mindset, sex, inner work, and inner work had anything to do with our emotional intelligence, tools, that includes any how-tos, how to meditate, how to create a morning routine, that kind of stuff. Finance, health, men's work, performance, fun, racism, habits, and psychedelics. That sounds like more than 11. Eh, it might have been more than that. It was 15. 15, 15 categories. Okay. Yes, exactly. 15. Wow. That is a sprawl of categories. It's a sprawl, right? And, and we've got, if you think about the category of mindset, for example, there's a lot of different topics about mindset and how we think about things and perspectives on things and you know, masculinity and that kind of stuff. So even, even within some of these categories, there's a, a pretty good sprawl inside of that. But any guesses on our, on our top uh, categories here? This is a bit unfair because you uh, gave me a bit of a heads up before the show. That's right, I did. <laughs> so, As a matter of fact, if you don't get these right, I'm going to be very upset. All right. So our number one category was mindset. That's right. right. That's right. And I think you said we had about 59, 60 episodes. We had 60 episodes in mindset. Wow, I did give this to you in detail, didn't I? You sure? <laughs> yes. And, and you forgot because that was only like seven minutes yeah, ago. about seeing the audience. <laughs> um, right. So 60 of our, our podcasts were in the mindset category. We, we are up to about 330 episodes. That's like 20%, just a little under 20% of our episodes focused on mindset. I guess that's not surprising. I think it's an important one. You know, Dr. Peter Diamandis talks often about mindset. He has a, he has a mindset Monday about how, how do we think about things differently. So I love that. I, I love, I mean, get, most guys live in their head their entire life. So when connecting with men, it's really, it's a great place to start to think about mindset. On that point, Bri, you know, one of the behind the scenes things that you and I talked about at the very beginning of the show was this idea of meeting men where they're at and guiding them to where that next level is. And so like you just said, men are conditioned and trained to live in our heads. So we spoke intellectually, you know, we brought a lot of intellect and mind heavy things throughout the course of this uh, podcast so that we could then guide men and be granted the authority to guide men into things like emotional fluency or into matters of the heart. So it doesn't surprise me that we had that many episodes around mindset. Yeah, it's, it's the perfect place to start for guys. It's something that we can get right away. And we then started to move. And as we went on our own journey about understanding our inner experience and how to start to express our inner experience, we went into category topic number two. Do you remember what that one was? Uh, was that relationships? It's not. It's inner work. The next two categories are inner work and tools, which all make sense. So inner work is anything related to our emotions, our spirituality, and, and understanding our, our inner world. So moving from the mind down into our body and into our emotions and what we're feeling. And then all the tools associated with that, how to create a morning routine, right? How, how to think differently, how to feel emotions, right? That kind of stuff. So those were our top three categories, mindset, inner work, and tools. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. And if I think about the two biggest concepts of the show's past four years, the two biggest concepts of all that kind of reign supreme and that are threads throughout all of those 15 categories you just mentioned, especially the top three. The first concept is the concept of drift, right? Stop drifting, start living and drift being that term Napoleon Hill coined around that phenomena of just meandering through life on autopilot with your subconscious thoughts and patterns and behaviors and fears and insecurities and worries and pressures just kind of 
dictating your life until you wake up one day and question how the hell did you get there? And usually that wake up call is either a two by four across the forehead or a Mack truck that runs you over. And the second key concept is stop lone wolfing your life, right? We talked at length about personal development on your own is slow, shallow, and incomplete. And if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And you and I, over these last four years of running the show, but also being deeply involved in you know, men's groups, leading masterminds, being in communities of men, I would say these have been four of the most tumultuous years of both of our lives from an emotional perspective. And at the same point in time, we're ready. We've been built to handle it for the greatest growth oriented years of our lives because of that. And without the support of the brotherhoods that we're a part of, I don't think we would have been able to have the courage to go as deep and look at this stuff, whether it's a Lyme disease for me, whether it was feelings of failure around, you know, your first business closing for you and a whole host of other relationship things, we never would have really looked at it fully if we weren't in relationship with other men. So those two key themes of stop drifting, stop lone wolfing, I believe reign supreme over the course of our four years. The category of relationships is actually the the fifth category that we talk about. And if we actually combine that with doing men's work, it, it would probably be a top three and you just mentioned, Dominic, one of the things we, we love to say on the podcast, which is doing this alone, doing this inner work alone is slow, shallow, and incomplete. And given that it's our last episode and we can say whatever we want, I'm going to say that's, that's not even fully accurate. I don't think after reflecting on these last four years and knowing what it's like to be in community and in a brotherhood, I actually don't think it's possible to take this journey alone. And we can start it alone and we can do some things alone. Uh, We can listen to podcasts alone, we can read books, and we can learn the tools about meditation, and we can do a lot of that on our own. And yes, it is slower, and it is shallow, and it is incomplete. But what's not advertised on the outside of the label of doing inner work is that it can be really hard. It truly feels like a, do you want the red pill or do you want the blue pill? And when you individually decide to take that red pill and take on this challenge of, of inner work, it is a storm. And we can read all the books about emotional fluency and having the compass and the direction of where to go. But without the support of brotherhood, there, I would have quit. I would have said, like, ah, fuck, I'll, give me the blue pill. I'm done. I'm done trying to feel all these, all these things. So I, I think it, it's truly something that is required if we really want to find the deepest levels of, of who our greatest man is. Yeah, man. And... One of the key things that I've heard from so many of our listeners over the years is I want that. I just don't know how to find it. You know, I like, I, I, I want other men in my life. I want those relationships. I just, you know, there aren't guys around me who need it. who are seeking the same kind of thing. And the only thing I can tell you is it's out there and you can create it. You know, it's out there in the form of Mankind Project, Every Man, you know, Sacred Sons. There's ways to get involved inexpensively online with virtual groups. There's Mankind Project does these intake weekends, three three days long called New Warrior Training. They're five, six hundred bucks, which I know for some guys, like that's meaningful money and it's difficult when times are tight. But you have to ask yourself, like, do I truly want this? Like save up for it and go. I remember, you know, watching Tony Robbins documentary, uh, I'm not your guru. And one of the women in the show who had the greatest breakthrough cost her like 5,000 bucks just to get the ticket to Tony Robbins, not let alone like fly from Brazil, put herself up for a week. Apparently she had to sell like her furniture to go to this thing. She wanted it that badly. She made it happen and her life changed. So it's all boils down to like, how badly do you guys want this community? How badly do you want the kind of relationship that Brian and I have forged because we had to put fucking work into this. You and I left the comforts of a corporate environment to create our own lives. And it has not been predictable. It has not been smooth sailing. Like we've been through the fucking gutters and the trenches, but we've done it together. And, you know, there's a number of other guys who are included in that mix. And maybe one more story I'll share. I know I shared this somewhere away along the way on the podcast. 
five years ago, I was in an ayahuasca retreat. And this was at the time where I was still kind of like on my inner work journey going solo everywhere. You know, I, I did kind of like solo adventures to the Mankind Project. I did a solo adventure to Landmark Forum, signed up for these other programs solo. I would meet cool people there, but I, I always went to them on my own. And I went to this ayahuasca retreat on my own out in LA. And there were these two younger guys there, I think probably in their late 20s, early 30s. And these two guys are big time YouTube creators, have a massive channel on YouTube that supports their entire life and they're huge. And two really fucking cool, deep dudes whose relationship I so envied. Like they were building something together online and it was very successful. They went to an ayahuasca journey together. And I remember the moment where I felt the deepest envy was after the first night of ceremony, the next morning, I saw them like laying next to each other on their sleeping bags because we all had like slept on the floor. And they were just like laying there next to each other, completely comfortable being that close and then talking about their experiences from the night before and being so supportive of one another and holding space. And I felt this deep longing to have a relationship like that where I could go on these adventures with another guy and I could talk about these things. Cause it felt like I went on all these great journeys, but I couldn't talk to anybody about them, you know? And in that moment, I was like, I want that. And shortly thereafter, you know, you were the guy tapped for, Hey, we're going to do the discerning Dick live talk. You want to share your experience. Shortly after that, it was the podcast. Then we're in the men's group together. Then we're starting the masterminds together. So it starts as a vision and then you have to put the effort in to create it. And starting those conversations, Dominic, you and I, even before the discerning dick, we started getting coffee on Saturdays every once in a while. Right. And we just started talking about some of these deeper topics, some of the experiences that you were having, some of the things I was, I was seeing on the, um, on the sex and sexual health side of things. And I didn't even know that you were in a sex addicts anonymous program at that time. Right. We were just talking. And so, for any guy that's listening to this and he hears us talking about brotherhood and maybe is feeling like, hey, I got my guys, but they don't want to talk about these sort of things, I challenge you. I challenge you to bring up some of these topics to the guys currently in your life and just see what happens. Because what Dominic and I have experienced in these four years here together is that there's a lot more guys out there yearning for these sort of conversations that are really afraid to start them. And when Dominic and I started these conversations, like he saw me on a stage, I saw him on a stage and, you know, we were talking about some similar things. So we had a starting point there, but we also had a, a friendship prior to that. That was not by any means deep. I went to a couple of parties at Dominic's house. We had a, a mutual friend that that's how we got connected, but we had that shallow, more shallow, I would say relationship prior to this blossoming into something much bigger. And so my, my challenge is, if that's something that you want, yes, there are communities out there that you can get involved with and pay for and go to events and start to build. That's a great way to do it. Also, maybe start asking those closest to you about their lives or start telling them about yours. Totally. You can drop breadcrumbs around that, right? So if, if there's a number of guys in your group who are like entrepreneurs, hey, let's have an entrepreneur mastermind circle for the next 90 days. We'll meet once a week. We'll talk about business stuff. But there's got to be one question that you ask about their personal lives. And you just watch. You do something like that. Everybody's going to start talking about their marriage or their kids or their weight or their mental health issues. You can get creative with this stuff. Talk about any kind of topic that's resonant with a group of guys, but then filter in one little opportunity to go deeper and the wheel starts rolling. I want to share with you a, um, an experience from one of our longtime listeners. And he wrote a, a really thoughtful email when he found out that the podcast was coming to a close. And I think this gets to a little bit of what we were just talking about regarding create what you seek to see in this world. And before I even read his note, you know, one of the things that I'm proud of, Bri, regarding how we're finishing this podcast is we gave our listeners enough time, you know, to know that, hey, we've got six more episodes left. And here's what that's going to look like. It gave our listeners kind of this chance to metabolize the loss and 
to reflect on like what they've experienced and what they've benefited from. And so we've been getting these really, really heartwarming and touching messages from many of you. And so it just kind of goes back to what we said a couple episodes ago regarding how you finish things says a lot about you, how you finish things matters. And we're starting to really see that you all are feeling honored and respected by the way that we're creating the space and the time for you to kind of come to grips with the fact that this show is ending. It's not just some abrupt announcement. And then here's the final episode. So here's what Daniel has to say. I discovered your podcast at the start of the quarantine, like many of our listeners did. I just started to pull at the threads of the men's work movement. I had taken an intentional mushroom trip with the intended goal of insights into how and why to start my own men's group and had just found a meeting place and made the calls when COVID broke out the following week, scuttling all my plans. I spent the isolation of quarantine devouring books like The Way of the Superior Man and binging your podcast feed and learning breath work. It was all so new and exciting. Your podcast quickly became the gold standard for me and is the podcast I've shared most with others. I listened to your primers on breath work with my teenage daughter on a long drive as she was dealing with anxiety and OCD issues at the time. That's really cool. I had to hear that he listened with his teenage daughter. And that was a whole phase for me. The years with Dominic and Brian in my ear. My interest in reinvention and in healing my relationship to the masculine had been the culmination of a, of a year of intense yoga immersion, taking classes six days a week. I found myself immersed in wellness for years and it had started to eclipse everything in my life. I'm an artist, a musician, but can honestly say I spent more time devouring wellness content than listening to or composing music during this time. I mean, can you relate to that, Brian? Like just like going all in on inner work, it kind oh, of like yeah. becomes all consuming. It's the first thing I would go to in conversations. By the way, I did start that men's group. And the first year of it was so intense. It felt like a revolution and that anything was possible. And then eventually, this is where it gets really interesting for me as a reader. Eventually, a shift occurred. The shift was a growing fatigue. And the fatigue was a weariness at optimizing myself. Oof, I can relate. I slowly became exhausted with seeing myself as a project and with what was a bit of a dictator in my head going by the name of growth mindset. And one of the reasons why I've loved your podcast so much is because I think we have a lot in common and there are a lot of uncanny resonances and coincidences. The greatest of these was the coincidence of you being sidelined with chronic Lyme at a time when I was feeling the most resistant to and checked out from wellness. It just made sense in some kind of cosmic way. My men's group membership eventually cut in half. I even tried to end it after two years, but was talked out of it by the men. We had to recharter with a new set of guidelines and tone, go to meetings every other week instead of weekly, and in general, chill the fuck out on intensity. Was this a failure? I don't think so. I think in a way, it was its own form of wisdom, the wisdom of surrender. And there's a few other things here, but just to end it, love to you. My heart is heavy for you. I love the ballsiness of your journey. It's wild. I've been bottoming out and decomposing in my own way over here. It's scary, but somehow connects me to source even more. Daniel. Man, I love, I love that, that story. And just this idea of it feeling all consuming sometimes and constant optimization. And the question that we have to ask ourselves is for what? Yep. And we've had so many podcasts on this. We have, des we've had every single year, we've had a design your life podcast. I don't know for the last two or three years, we've had a, a bold move. And I think that's so important because it's for what? And we can so easily get lost in the drift of inner work or the drift of personal wellness. And it can become, it can feel almost like a religion in some cases. That point where Daniel said that like the, the exhaustion from constantly trying to optimize oneself. Yeah. And for what? Like you just said, it could become its own form of drift. He said, you, know, you lead with personal development in every conversation. And I've noticed that too. And naturally, as I've gone deeper into the inner work world, I'm more and more surrounded by people in inner work. And whenever you talk to people, everyone's going through a fucking process and, you know, <laughs> you know, just learn something about their childhood or their mom or, you know, and, and it's like, I see this tongue in cheek because, you know, I've been there and I was that guy who, you know, who, who did all that, but it's like, 
my coach, David, David Waldis, who was on this podcast too, he said one time, and this was like really insightful for me. He goes, at a certain point, Dominic, don't you just get to enjoy the fruits of your labor? Yeah. And, and one of the things I've always loved about David is he's always so light and, you know, is ready to crack a joke about anything. And he can go as deep as possible on any, any subject. And he was all just like you have this ability to keep it light, even in the most intensive places. I have this desire now to kind of just like step away from the holding of space for such deep, intense stuff. And I have a desire to like to play a little bit more. I've been listening to more podcasts that have nothing to do with personal development that are just like cracking jokes all day long. I know there's that part of me too that's hungry, the playful side. So Daniel's reflections really spoke to me in that sense too. For four years, Dom, we have been in, in create mode and that's such a beautiful place to be. And we're, we're, we're talking right now, we're going to continue on this podcast uh, on, on this episode about how much fun and lessons learned related to that, that creation sort of mode. And my consuming of books and podcasts have, has really gone down since we've been doing this because of the, both the, the time and, and mental space that, that it takes. Uh, and something I'm really looking forward to is consuming again and taking in some, some uh, new things that are actually not related to inner work. And so I've, I've developed a real love for, for building like physically with my hands, like woodworking. I've been really interested in Jane McGonigal's work related to uh, futurism and like what does the future look like in different areas. So there's, there's these areas that I wouldn't necessarily call inner work or personal development that I'm really excited about. And I know that everything that I've learned over these past four years and years prior to that, that have built these, this inner foundation I can bring that to every single thing that has nothing to do with personal development. And that feels really good. When I went to go build the tiny house back a couple months ago in North Carolina, I was with all different types of people that I probably would have never seen in any other walk of my life. And I was able to unconsciously bring all these tools to create a better space for doing what we were there to do. And what's better than that? Totally. Totally. Like bringing your wealth of wisdom to a, a spot that normally that wouldn't exist, like cross-pollination. And something else you just said, I want to make sure to, to note this on the podcast, because if you're a listener and we were a part of your ritual, if like every Monday the episode released and you were listening to our show and now there's this void in your listenership, it's like, what do I, how do I fill this time now when I'm on my drive or in the car one of our mastermind guys, Chad Grimm, who found the, the mastermind through the show, he sent me a message the other day, kind of like, hey, do you have another podcast you would recommend to fill the void? And I said, you know, this might actually be a great opportunity for you to not fill the void with another inner work podcast. If you want to, of course, you know, and, and the one I might recommend is Tom Bilyeu, I think from Impact Theory. I think he's a phenomenal interviewer. But maybe this is a chance for you to push pause and say, not to just drift into the next personal development podcast. Maybe this ending is an opportunity for you to do kind of like what you're doing, Bri, which is maybe I'm going to listen to some more tiny house building projects or I'm listening to this one show. It's ridiculous called The Basement Yard. It's like these two early 30 year old Brooklyn dudes who they just they talk about the most irrelevant shit, but it's just a laugh fest for however long the episodes are, right? I love these two guys, Joey Santagato and his buddy. I don't know. I used to watch Joe <laughs> Santagato on, on YouTube. Like absolutely, you will have negative personal development listening to the show. <laughs> and I can't tell you how much I enjoy it. So there is an opportunity to not just roll right into the next personal development podcast. Yeah. And that feels like a really good segue into the fifth category which is sex. So I thought you said relationships is the fifth category. Is is sex the fourth most? Let's see here. Man, I don't even have my numbers straight. Yes, so you're right. <laughs> sex was four. We jumped ahead to, to five, which is relationships. So to round them out again, we got mindset as number one. We've got inner work and tools, which are two and three. Four is sex. Five is relationships. And, and sex, we even talked about this a couple episodes ago. Sex was 
heavy in our first couple of years that we talked about on the show. And then it kind of disappeared a little bit over the last year and a half. And I remember we did, we did it. We did an episode on porn this past year and we were like, when was the last time we did a conversation on porn? It was on, for whatever reason, the episode was released on Christmas day of like 2020. (laughs) (laughs) Look, Look at our timing. And it was a year and a half. And I think the reflection that we had was, big part of the reason why we did this show was it was almost catharsis for us to talk about the things that like we weren't allowed to talk about. And for the first couple of years, it was sex heavy. You were also running, you know, sexual health company. But after we kind of got that out of our system, it was like, okay, you know, like, great. It's no longer taboo. I I don't need to give it my attention anymore. Yeah. In in 2019 and 2020, we had at least five different episodes called Why Dominic Quit Porn. Or why Dominic quit <laughs> masturbating, or why <laughs> how to how to look at free range organic porn, or oh, that's, I mean, there the, was, that's the porn gate episode. Of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That was was that it? That was the porn gate episode. No, 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 no. I think um, it was the alternatives to porn. I think is the one. Yeah. that was the porn gate. Yeah, where we talked about audio porn or the uh, reading uh, story stories of porn. Oh yeah, I mean we 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 hit that really hard in the beginning. And it's funny, you know, we, we started this podcast with most men live in their head their entire life and never really get into their body. And it's funny because sex is so body orientated, yet we still have sex in our head, right? So right. if you're ever feeling anxious during sex, you're in your head. You're not actually in your body. But it is, it is interesting, these two topics around like mindset being in our head and sex, which is a really easy way to relate with guys because we're, we're, we we all have have some thing around sex, whether it's something that we want or some anxiety around it or whatever it may be. And so we really hit that hard in the beginning. And I still find, quite frankly, if I go get my hair cut at a new barber or meet somebody new, I still find that topic as something that guys can connect on immediately. And then you can talk about all the other stuff if you want to. But that's an that's a easy one. It can be done in an honoring way. It can be fun. But it can also be done in a way that guys aren't used to hearing. Almost any guy will talk to you about porn. The majority of guys watch it and watch too much of it and they know it. And so like that's a really easy way to just kind of grease the skids about inner world awareness of kind of like, hey, (laughs) you know, do you ever feel do you ever feel kind of shitty after you watch some porn, but you kind of can't stop, you know, and watch that conversation mushroom into something. You mentioned something about the barber. Have you seen this guy? He, he's gone viral with his videos. He's like this super masculine barber and he's, he's like all tatted up and he puts his phone facing whoever his, whoever's hair he's cutting and he starts cutting the guy's hair and then he leans over and kisses the man on the forehead. And every guy who's like sitting in the chair getting his hair cut kind of, you know, blinks his eyes three or four times and then he laughs. <laughs> and... Every guy seems to whatever. And, and the guys in his chair are like in many cases, super masculine dudes who like who aren't bothered by it at all. And it's it's interesting because the barbershop is one of those places where men are just like kind of allowed to experience intimacy and touch, you know, like like the guy is touching you. Sometimes the barbershop, some conversations get real and get personal. And so I think this guy takes it a step further. He kisses guys on the forehead and it's so it doesn't elicit a homophobic response from anyone. It's just kind of like, okay. It's just okay. That's it. And people are just like, okay, you kiss me on the forehead. Let's move on. No, no one grabs him by the back of the head and pulls him in for the real thing. Like <laughs> it's not, it's not, it just, it just seems like, like these signs of affection, like this is how harmless it could be. Like, I think most times our defenses are so up and he found a way to do it where guys are just like, okay. So I, th- I think what, what, that, what, what that's really trying to say is I'm not advocating going out and kissing all your male friends on the forehead. That's not something that I do. I was wondering about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What I do think it shows is there's more openness and there is more of a, a hunger to connect on a deeper level and to break down some of those walls. And I think we give men credit for. So before we transition into the top five most downloaded episodes of all time, at least as they stand today. I think it might be a, a funny reminder that running a show like this opens you up to some opinions of people. There were a few critical <laughs> Apple podcast reviews that I received 
three years ago, something like that. We did an episode on this around criticism and how to take criticism. I think that this is, you know, one of the things that most guys are afraid of writing their first LinkedIn post or starting up a, a video blog or launching a podcast is like, you're going to take some heat from people. And that's true. But there was this one day, it was like 24 hours where these three posts went live. It, it felt like a real coordinated attack on me personally. The first one, the title was So So. Dominic and Brian discuss interesting topics, but seem very inexperienced, almost like amateurs, especially <laughs> Dominic. <laughs> I've attended I've attended a few of their events and enjoyed some of them, but this podcast isn't very good. Dominic's tone is very condescending. Wow. Dominic, by the way, I think I think your tone has really improved. <laughs> it's like it, you know, in the beginning, really condescending, but these days really uplifting, really supportive even. Well, I think the joke I made at the time when these posts went live, I was like, hey, Bri, if you got something to say, man, if you want more airtime, <laughs> yeah. you can just let me know directly. You don't have to go back channel it. Yes. <laughs> this one was titled, Not Worth Your Time. I've given this podcast a few listens, and while I do appreciate it, I have some critiques. I really wish we would hear more of Brian's perspectives. Dominic comes across very narcissistic and self-serving. It is hard to get through an episode when he seems so inauthentic. I think Brian should do some solo episodes. <laughs> and that's where I was like, bro, if you want more airtime. <laughs> what was the username on that? Was it Brian the Stace? <laughs> yeah, this was Nick Brown 40. Nick Brown. Okay. And the last one, this is from Ray of Sunshine 787, titled Dominic Needs to Go. This podcast is so lame. Brian has great stories and is very funny. I don't care for Dominic too much. <laughs> Ray of sunshine perfect that was that was not the only critical feedback that we got though no I, I know you got one too but i, I just want i want to let the trolls know if you really wanted to troll me you have to space out your negative reviews you can't i mean the fact that it was all done in a 24-hour period and up to that point we'd all had like great great reviews I knew that that was, it was like one person who basically had an ax to grind, who probably had a three different accounts and created those posts. If you really wanted to tweak me and you were committed to playing the long game and cause me to question, you could have dripped one of those every couple of weeks for like, you know, three or four weeks. And then I might've started to, that might've stung a little bit more, I, not to give any trolls the playbook, but. So you're, so, you're, you. <laughs> so you're giving so you're giving some advice on how to how to contact your your favorite podcaster, but also how to troll your favorite podcaster. This is nice. Yeah, right. <laughs> really, really rounded out here on the great man within. Well, you got a zinger I got, somewhere yeah, along the I way. Yeah, I got too. I got trolled pretty hard. I mean, we did a whole episode on this, and luckily, when I was going through all the different episodes and categorizing them, I, I don't remember which one it was that we talked about this, but. Actually, and I, I went through our reviews looking for this, but I couldn't find it. And then I remembered why I couldn't find it. Because the person actually gave us a five-star review. I know. But then said that this podcast is great, Dominic's amazing, but Brian is absolutely awful. And I think even reprimanded Dominic for having me on the show. Well, so I, I just want to provide feedback without docking our star rating. So that's why that, I that was you. I got it. Got it. <laughs> that was in response to my three coordinated attacks. You decided to even the playing field. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Someone called you uninitiated. That was, yeah. that was the, uh, I think, I think, the, I think that the question was, I like this podcast, but seriously, Dominic, why Brian? <laughs> yes. I think that's, that's exactly how it went. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to give you credit because, when we did the episode on criticism, you hadn't seen the review yet, and we read it live. That's right on the air, and you responded to it real time, which was really cool. I'm going to see if I can remember which episode that was and link it in the show notes. These episodes that we're about to talk about are top five, and all these other playlists we've created. I'm going to do my best to remember what we talked about on the show and, and link them in the show notes. So this episode and the final episode that I'm going to record, the solo one, I'm going to put all the playlists that we put together of, you know, our top episodes of this year, our favorites from that year, so that you all have something to listen to in our absence. So shall we do the drum roll on the top five episodes most downloaded of all time? Let's do it. And I find this funny that we're doing this on the, on the last podcast ever. <laughs> it's something that in the lessons learned category that we'll, we'll, we'll go to here in a little bit. 
probably should have done this a little earlier. I know you did more of this, but I, I had never really taken a look at the numbers or anything like that on the podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I looked at it. I looked at it pretty much along the way and created certain lists. Like, here's our top most downloaded from. I have a list of most downloaded of all time, but but sometimes the episodes like flip flops, they change position. And so we're going to give you our top five as they stand today on December 6th, 2022. So, episode number five most downloaded is the episode number 285 called Exploring Seven Common Masculine Wounds. And I was surprised to see that so high up the list. And I think there's a uh, there's an appetite for men to look at what are these experiences that I, you know, I had as a child that I kind of just picked myself up off the ground, dusted myself off, you know, slapped some dirt on and said I'm okay, but then trudged through life with that gaping hole of a wound and going, oh, that's why I feel this way as an adult. So that that was a really important episode. I'd like to give you a lot of credit for some of these top episodes and this one in particular, because this was one where you said, hey, I want to talk about these seven masculine wounds. And my feedback was like, that sounds like a terrible idea. Like, <laughs> but first of all, like masculine, that word gets thrown around a lot. And then wounds, like, oh my God. What guy's going to want to listen to the wounds they have? And then we got into it. And I have that categorized as one of my most memorable episodes because of all, even the learnings that I had in us discussing, like, what are these seven masculine wounds? And I believe, Dom, that maybe you even, you even sourced these from your social media account, or at least you were talking about these seven masculine wounds. Isn't that, isn't that where it came from? Yeah. Some of them were my own personal experience. Others were sourced from the masterminds and social media. But yeah, like masculine wounds like... A lot of guys had got the belt when they were younger, you know, for misbehaving. And many guys don't even look at that as a wound. But if you were a child that expressed anger and then you were beaten with a belt, the message you were told is your anger is not welcome here. It's not safe. Suppress it, repress it. And then you have a lifetime where you don't know how to handle your anger. You don't even feel your anger. So it's stuff like that that creates this awareness of, oh my God, there are worlds within me that I've, you know, I've stifled and shoved down. So that, that turned out to be a really popular episode. Yeah, that, that one really resonated. And, and I think if, if I were to retitle it and we weren't using the words masculine and wounds, it'd be the, the experiences that stick with us in not a good way. <laughs> you know, like that's, that's really what we were talking about in that, in that episode. Yeah, the fourth most downloaded episode is episode number 268. And this was the first installment of the Building Your Best Self series. So we did a 12 episode series at the end of 2021, kind of leading up into your bold move. So that first episode was five questions every man must ask about his life, All right? Five questions every man must ask about his life. That's episode number 268. And, you know, some of those questions are like, do I have buddies or do I really have brothers? Am I creating a life of intentional design or am I just drifting? You know, these types of questions. Am I truly orienting my life around what I say is most important or am I just kind of responding to what's urgent? And I had written a, an article on the 10 questions every man must ask about his life. We summarized like the top five, put it into an episode. And I think I linked the article on that episode as well. So that was our fourth most downloaded episode. And is that still available, Dom, those, those top 10 questions? Yeah, I think I linked that in the episode. Yeah, definitely worth going through. And that was one of our first attempts at, at doing a series, building our best selves. I think that, that was at the end of 2021? Yeah, last year. Yep. Right. And we had like 12 or so episodes related to that. And I think all 12 of those were higher ranked than most of the other podcasts around that same time period. So um, these all fell into the category of the tools, the how-tos, and man, those are not only fun to do, but really high impact and, and really speaks to build your best self slash who is your great man. Right. Yes. Yeah, spot on. And, and I think guys appreciated the coordinated journey. It's like, okay, we're going on a 12 week journey. This is something really substantial and every episode built on itself towards an end of discovering your, you know, living your great man while making your bold move for the year ahead. And speaking of which, man, this podcast started as a bold move idea. The bold move idea that I had in 2018 was launch a podcast in 2019. And this became 
one of the crown jewels of the great man within ecosystem and community over these last four years. So, you know, we, we talked a lot about the bold move in the previous episodes. We did the live event, you know, by the time this episode launches, it's going to be in the past, but in the top of the show notes, I will place a replay page to the bold move masterclass because shit, man, this one idea for a bold move turned into a life-changing experience for both of us. And if you're looking to do something big in your 2023 and you still don't know what that is, or you could use a little extra push, check out that replay. It's at the top of the show notes. Well, it's interesting that bold move didn't just have a big impact on you, right? It had a big impact on me, had a big impact on everybody that listens to this, had a big impact of people that took the next step, which was either taking a class or joining a mastermind or whatever that may have been. I mean, that, that's huge. Sure is, man. Yeah. Thanks for naming that too. Third most downloaded episode of all time. This gets to the sex category. Episode number 43. These last three, these top three are all from our first year. Partly, you know, they've been around for a while. I have more of an opportunity to be downloaded. But the third most downloaded episode, how to last longer in bed. Oh, man. Yeah. Five practices on how to last longer in bed. As I was going through these topics, we had at least four or five episodes on just how to last longer. <laughs> That's right. And they always crushed. And I don't remember what guest it was, but it was a woman. And she's like, you know, sometimes I just wish he wouldn't last that long. I know, <laughs> I know. Like, wait, wait a second. What? This is what we've been working towards. <laughs> All the work I've been putting in, you don't appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a popular episode. The second most downloaded episode of all time is the very first episode we ever released called The Number One Enemy to Living a Powerful Life. And that was the episode where we described drift. I actually listened to that episode again a couple of weeks ago, and I was really impressed with the quality of that episode and how we set the tone for like, hey, this is drift. This is insidious. Here's how it shows up in your life unwittingly. Here's how it drives your life. Here's how it perpetuates status quo. Here's how it keeps you small. And that is an episode that I've probably listened to six or seven times over the last four years. And every time I go back and go, wow, I'm really proud of that. And I still point people to when they don't know what where to begin on the show, I say, go back to episode number one, start there. There's no mistake that that one was so good. I, I remember that one vividly. I also think, Dom, you had, I don't know if you were running a class or doing a keynote on Drift at the I time. Was, yeah. Right? Yeah. And you brought in a lot of that. So there was a lot of work that went into that topic and really distilling this idea down from an entire book down to one simple episode. And you crushed that episode. And, and whenever <laughs> I talk to people about the Great Man Within podcast, this is the topic they most often bring up is drift and what that means to them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for that, man. And then the first and most downloaded episode, drum roll, please. For anyone who's listened to the show regularly, your regular listeners will know exactly this topic, but for anyone who's a newer listener, this is going to be coming completely out of left field because it has very little to do with seemingly the rest of the show and all the categories that Brian just talked about, the number one most downloaded episode, and it's not even close, is a man's guide to the menstrual cycle <laughs> featuring Alexandra Pope and Shawnee Hugo Wurlitzer from the Red School. And they teach women how to live their lives in accordance with the menstrual cycle. I had just kind of like a harebrained idea as I was learning about, you know, this mysterious thing that we've heard about all our lives, like the period and the menstrual cycle. I was like, I want to know more about this thing because all the women in our communities, you know, were like they post about it and they talk about the different phases of the cycle and how their energy shift. And all of a sudden I'm like, this sounds like something I should probably know about given how central this is to, you know, the feminine experience. And when I brought the idea to you, you're like, that's stupid. <laughs> That's a terrible idea. Find a, find a different topic. <laughs> but it turned out that our guests were incredible at breaking this down to the four seasons of the menstrual cycle, helping us to understand that if we want to be like truly trustworthy masculine leaders in our heterosexual dynamics and relationship, that we have to understand this experience that's so central to women's lives and how it's been vilified and teased and 
looked at as kind of a barrier to sex and getting what we want as like an inconvenience and instead turning it into this really beautiful way to build trust and hold space and be a like a really compassionate man for your your woman. I am so happy that this this episode stood the test of time as our number one episode ever and, and has been there for a long time too. I mean, we, we did that on, uh, it was December of 2019 is when we released that. And you're right. I thought that was an absolutely terrible idea. It was not a topic that I had any interest in at all and has not only been our number one podcast, but also the number one topic that I talk with, uh, with women about. And it's, it's shocking how many women have told me that they didn't know these things about their own body, that they hadn't been taught in, the, in these ways. And if there's one thing I've learned on this podcast, guys love a good toolbox and an understanding of like, what are the rules? How should I follow it? What do I need to understand? And this was such an area, such a black box area for any, and I'm not talking about just romantic partners. I'm talking about any woman in your life that's going through, that has a cycle. And understanding them a little bit more, you know, we've talked about the emotion of love and what that is. And I like to think about love as just the openness and willingness to continually learn about somebody else's experience. And this is what that did. It opened up the black box. It let us learn about our partners, our coworkers, our moms, our sisters in a completely different way. And it, it gave us new words a new way to dialogue about this topic that is very rarely talked about. And it also created one of the funniest experiences in my life is when I started talking about this subject with my sister across the Christmas dinner table as my dad was sitting right in between us at the head of the table. And he just about lost it. He's just like, why are we talking about this at dinner? What happened to my son? He used to play sports and now he's Mr. Sensitive and just <laughs> absolutely lost it in, in the most dad way ever. But yeah, this episode was a game changer. It's still something that I think about I, at least weekly. I'm wondering like where, where my partner is in the cycle and wondering what I can do, how I can be a, a little bit of a better partner. One of the most rewarding parts of the episode was how many men and women listeners reached out and said, I listened to this with my partner and she broke down into tears, like felt so seen and heard. And this was demystified for guys. Like you said, you know, we, we all kind of want like a playbook and to a certain degree, like they gave us a playbook. Here are the four seasons of the cycle. Here's like how you can potentially expect energies to change and what her sex drive does during this phase versus that phase, what she may want from you. That was one of the most helpful things is in this season, here's what she may want from you. And here's how to ask what she may want from you because your woman may be different than how we are. And, and the, it was just such a beautiful, I would say of all the episodes that we've ever done, that's the one, it was just kind of, everything was nailed from start to finish. And you and I learned probably more from that episode than any other that we did. After they left the Zoom call, I think you and I just looked at each other. We're like, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> yeah. And we did. And now this one didn't get rated nearly as highly uh, or wasn't downloaded as much. But we did a follow up to that. I think it, it was women's menopause and like understanding. A man's guide to menopause. A man's guide to menopause. Yes. Which was also really enlightening. I, th I think it, it didn't have quite the playbook effect as the cycle did. But nonetheless, another really great episode. Want to share another experience from one of our listeners who reached out to me on Instagram. His name is Landon. Hey, Dominic. I've been a listener of the podcast on and off for the past few years. During my work break today, I rotated back to the great man within only to find out the news that the show was coming to an end. You and Brian have been with me during my commutes, my gym sessions, my road trips while I'm doing chores at home. You've been with me in great times, growing times, and even as I hit an all-time low. While we have never interacted, you have been an iteration of a father figure to me after growing up without any significant parental guidance and I'm eternally grateful for the impact you've made on my life. I've recently turned 28. I've grown tremendously during my 20s, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, and I do attribute a lot of that to you. Demographically, we may seem different, but I haven't related more to any other podcaster or mentor in terms of mindset and values. Thank you for providing a space that I could feel welcomed and respected as a gay man of color. And thank you for being vulnerable and broadcasting your wisdom so that it could reach this island boy all the way in Hawaii. 
I made a bold move this year to move to Vegas, to explore the unknown in life and within myself, to go on a young man's journey into the wilderness and emerge better and stronger. It's been the toughest year of my life. And now I end the year as what feels to be the most aligned and authentic version of myself yet. I can go on and on, but I have an immense gratitude for you and the work you've done and will continue to do. I'm better off because of you. I didn't expect to get so emotional during this work break, but I had to step out and go to my car. I thought the ceiling was just leaking water onto my face, but turns out it was tears. <laughs> Partly a sense of grieving, mostly an overwhelming sense, feeling of gratitude. You're a powerhouse and inspiration and an amazing human being, and you inspire me to be the same. As a fellow Scorpio, landmark graduate, and man on his journey to be the best man he can be, thank you from the bottom of my heart, and I wish you the best as you continue on your journey. Man, a guy like that at the age of 28 and beginning his journey already has the language, already has some of the tools. Dude, yes. And... You know, you already mentioned this on the podcast, um, th this podcast, but, you know, life often comes at us either as a feather and we pay attention to it or we get the two by four across the face. And when we don't pay attention to that, we get the Mack truck. And one of our goals with this podcast was less Mack trucks, more lessons, more, more awareness, more understanding, right? And that guy that, that wrote that, I'm sure will have Mack trucks in his life, but he was going to learn a lot faster and a lot differently with the tools that, that he's described. I mean, I'm, I'm so pumped for that guy. And thank you. And, and for, I don't know, what was his name? Landon. Landon. Thanks for writing that, Landon. That, that's amazing. Yeah, really. Thanks for writing that. And I had the same reflection as you about where he is in an age in his journey. And the, one of the things I really appreciated about what he wrote here was he went to Vegas kind of like summoned the courage, had his bold move, moved from Hawaii to Vegas. And he said, I underwent the most difficult year of my life. But then I've emerged as someone who's stronger mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. And I think that's what a lot of guys need to understand is when you're playing this game, you know, when you're doing the inner work, when you're making these bold moves, don't expect life to get easier. Certain parts of life that were previously perplexing to you and challenging for you may, be, may get easier. You know, Keith and I talk about when a guy cuts us off on the, on the freeway, that used to, you know, cause us road rage. Now it's barely a blip on the radar. So that's easier. But life will continue to give you more challenges because what you're now doing is you're playing this game going deeper. And sometimes, you know, you need to go through the gauntlet to go deeper. So I just want to say thank you to Landon. This goes back to something I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast. Like, how do you get the attention of your favorite podcaster or, you know, your influencer? The way that our listeners have always got my attention is when you tell me what you've learned on the show, you've applied and it's made a difference in your life and how that's impacted your life. That has always gotten my attention. That's what Landon did. That's what Daniel did. The man whose story we shared earlier. And when you don't ask for anything in return, because we, we give so much on the show, right? Like in, in this show, we've for many years, we haven't commercialized anything at, at a certain point. We did open the doors to masterminds, but we've never had ads on the show. We've never really sold anything other than like, like the, the masterclass this year. And so we give a lot and we get a lot of emails where it's like, can you give me more info? Can you give me coaching? Can you, you know, and sometimes that's warranted, of course. But the guys who have reached out and have just been like, here's what we've done to improve our lives. And Daniel, who is the artist and musician, a couple of years ago, even reached out and said, if you guys want new intro music, I'd be happy to give you new intro music. And we really should have taken him up on that offer. I just kind of fell behind in a lot of other list of things to do, but even offered something to us. So those have always been the ways that I've stood up and recognize the men and know their names now. And I will remember Landon and I've certainly known Daniel for years now. And there's a reason behind that because when we read something like that, it's energy giving to us. And this podcast takes energy to create. So when we see that sort of feedback and there's no request for energy, <laughs> and energy more, like more energy to be taken out, that just gives it to us. Uh, for me, it does, Dominic. When I hear something like that, I'm like, man, like this is really important. And that's the kind of stuff I'm going to miss while we're not doing this podcast. So thank you so much. Yeah, that was really well said, man. Well, 
you know, since we're winding things down here, Bri, and this is your last episode, I wanted you to have significant space on the floor here to share some of your favorite episodes and lessons learned. And then also, you know, you're going to have the final word on this show because I have the, the final word on the last episode. But where would you, man, like to begin? Well, I, I went through every single one of our 300 plus episodes. And not only did I categorize them by like theme, which we already talked about, but I also categorized them for me personally, which ones were my favorite. And that's just like, they were just fun to do. Like, I loved it. Uh, which ones were funny? We had a couple of those in there. And then which ones were memorable? Like, had a really big, big impact on me uh, or something that I, I continually think about. So when I look at some of these, I look at the, the one that we talk about often on this podcast, which is... Dominic's four years in Sex Addicts Anonymous. So this was the the interview of of you going through that experience and really what kicked off your inner journey. So that one was was wildly memorable. Another one was Five Ways Men Lose Credibility with Women with Madeline Moon. That was a really highly rated one also. I put that one squarely in the memorable category because she gave us five, five rules to think through. And I use those today continuously in in my relationship and uh that's been a great one there's another one this this one's titled your ultimate guide to books choosing reading and retaining but we did this with giovanni beckford and we did this i think three years in a row maybe uh this is probably the for the only year we haven't haven't done it with giovanni but giovanni is a savant in, in a lot of areas in life and the inner work but he's an unbelievable uh consumer of information and gave us a great system on how to find great books and how to uh, take notes to retain it. It was huge. That was great. Another one, Dominic, I put this one in one of my favorites. And this was your TEDx talk. And it was titled, The Bold Journey Women Want Men to Take. And I thought it's just such a well-done, well-crafted message about what women are trying to tell guys whenever they say like, why won't guys do the inner work? Or that's maybe not the words they use, but like, why is my husband or why is my, it usually comes out of some sort of complaint. And this is what they're actually trying to ask. And, and I love that TEDx live that you did. Thanks, man. Another one, and this is a more recent one from this year, August of this year, but this was related to neuroplasticity, rewiring your brain to drift less. And this was with Ben, what's his name? Ben... Aaron's? Aaron's. Aaron's. Yeah. yeah. That was great. That was one of those like in the tools category of ways to like rethink what's like what our experiences are and how to shift from from that drift state into something more intentional. So I thought that was a really great one. We did one called Dr. Molly Maloof, Sex, Love, and Love Drugs. Yep. And I love this one because this one fits into the, the category of like future of, future of relationships, future of health. That was a really interesting one that we did this year also. I had to throw in, Dominic, the four feel-good porn alternatives. Uh, that was, that was, Simply because that killed my corporate speaking career and it killed led your to porn gate. Yes, exactly. Exactly. All right. A couple more here. This one uh, featured Alexa Martinez keeping sex and desire burning during COVID. And the reason this one had such a memorable impact on me is because she discussed her relationship board meeting that she has with her partner, Jordan. And that's something that Beck and I have incorporated and has been integral to our relationship and to understand um, where we're at and giving us a specific time to, to catch up with each other, each other every single week. That's a great one. Okay, Dominic, you'll definitely remember this one. This is with a guy named Eric Maddox. Oh, yeah, sure. And the title of the episode is Listening Skills from the Interrogator Who Caught Saddam Hussein. Right. And if that topic's not enough of an eye catcher, that podcast was an unbelievable story. If you take nothing at all, forget personal work in that episode at all, but it's an unbelievable story about this guy. And, and uh, my takeaway from that is how do I get off of my stage and get onto somebody else's to really understand their experience and where they're at? As a hostage negotiator, like when did Saddam Hussein get captured? Like 18 years ago, it, the story is so good that he's been telling the same story for 18 years and there are still audiences lining up to hear it. It's that good. Like I'm writing down all of the episodes that you're, you're putting here so I can put in the show notes like Brian's podcast. Maybe I'll even create a list 
uh, a Spotify playlist where you can just listen to all Brian's favorites. <laughs> Love it. All right, well, let's keep this thing rolling. So this one, I, rem- I remember this one because I felt so uncomfortable during this podcast. The entire podcast, and there was laughs, but they were mostly nervous laughs. Oh, I know this one. Do you know which one I'm going with? Which one this is, is it? This is the comedian, Frank King? No, that one's on my list too, though. Okay, okay. That, I'm definitely going to hit that one because that, that had similar but different uh, sort of feeling to it. This one was with uh, with B. Arthur, and it's how white men can have better conversations about race. Yep. And it was it was really a great tutorialist falls into the tools category. But man, I was not sure what we should be laughing at, what we shouldn't be laughing at, like what was okay to say, what was not okay to say. And they were amazing in guiding us in that conversation. So B. Arthur is not the Golden Girls B. Arthur, the old white woman. It's she, She's a black woman. And one of the things I remember she said on the show, she goes, here's a telltale way to know that your your white friends have no black friends is they refer to every black person as African-American. Yes. Right? right. And and she's like, that's a telltale sign that that you do not have any black friends because you think that everyone's African. And and I remember I, I shared that with some people in my life and they're like, wait, but I don't get it. If they're not African American, what are they? I'm like, look, just because a person is black doesn't mean that they're African American. They could have been born in Africa. They could have been born in Europe. They could have Dominican Republic. Like, come on, guys. You know? And and so people are like, oh my God. Yeah. And so she she hits <laughs> she hits you direct with that shit in the episode was it is uncomfortable for white guys who haven't had a lot of conversations around race. But that's one of the things I really appreciated about this journey on the show, too, is when there have been movements like Black Lives Matter, you can't hide from that as a public voice. Like you have to dive in and get intelligent. And I remember you and I looked at ourselves and we're like, wow. Like we kind of had to really look at ourselves and say, how did we avoid this for so long? We, we so often would jump into a topic, Dominic, that we were learning in real time and feel free to share it, right? Because we were sharing from our perspective and, and the different tools that we were trying and everything else. This topic was one where we had to take a step back and say, wait a second. Yeah. Where are we at on this? What do we need to learn? What do we not even understand that we need to learn yet? And we asked for help from people that were willing to give it. We uh, for several friends of color, people like B. Arthur came in and also did some work around this, too. I know you hired a coach to help with this. So, yeah, that was one of the podcasts that came on the, on the heels of that. Well, to this a little bit of, a, of an annex from this conversation is one, one of the things I've learned as a podcaster with the feedback that we get, we get exposed very quickly on where our lapses of awareness are. Like one of the things that we found out early when we were talking, uh, when we released the podcast was there were a number of gay men who reached out and were like, we love the show's topics, but we don't feel included in your vernacular. And so that was like a kind of a big wake up call of, wow, like how can I be more inclusive? And we've gotten other feedback of, well, yeah, there's two guys from the Northeast who are unmarried, who don't have kids, who are in a certain economic bracket. And we get that that feedback and it's like, you're right to even have that self-awareness. And then people of color reaching out and saying, there are conversations that feels like they're incomplete because you guys aren't addressing or even acknowledging. You don't even have the awareness to name the fact that you're, the perspective that you're coming from is a limited perspective. I think we did our best job possible at taking that feedback very openly and saying, thank you, we want more of that. And it certainly led to some uncomfortable moments But I know for a fact, four years later, when I walk into rooms and when I start to speak and people ask me for advice or, you know, what's my opinion on something, I am much more self-aware to name the blind spots that I have. And when I, when I see so many people on other influencers on Instagram or guys weighing in on masculinity, they're so unaware of their limited perspective. They don't even name it. And it's hard to trust that. I learned that we, to some people, were hard to trust at the very beginning until we brought our own awareness into check. And a lot of that feedback that we got in our early years stopped coming in those later years because we did a better job of it. And that was feedback that was appreciated because we've we've gotten the opposite of that since saying, hey, like, thank you very much. That made me feel more included. I was just a funny aside, Dominic. I was at Equinox 
for the first time in about three years, uh, <laughs> a few days ago, and I did a class. And I'm not really a class person, but Becca wanted to go, and I'm glad we did. But there was one moment in the class where the teacher, I was, I was maybe one of two guys in there, and the teacher was like, come on, ladies. And <laughs> as a white yeah. heterosexual male, I very rarely like get pinned into the like, that's not me sort of category. And I could feel it for the first, and I was so thankful that I felt that for maybe one of the first times in my life. Like, oh, that, there it is. That's what it feels like to be not, not inclusive. Huh. That really does suck. That sucks. Yeah. And so uh, this journey about, uh, you know, the feedback that people gave us and the areas in which we expanded our, our awareness and, and actions was a great learning, a great learning for us in this. Yeah. Well said. Um, all right. Just a few more here. This one was called Four Spiritual Lessons for My Special Needs Sister. And this episode was about your sister, man. And I cried during this episode. And I also take this with me every day that that your sister does a better job than anybody I, I know. And there's four lessons. I'm just going to hit one of them about receiving. Receiving gifts, receiving acts, and like the excitement and the feedback that she gives people immediately. I will never forget those stories and and um, just the joy that that Mary brings. And that that was a a heart centered message and and episode that I absolutely loved. Can I just hit on, hit on something here? You just uh, triggered. Please. You know, in my experience, special needs folks have so fewer barriers around receiving gifts, receiving praise and compliments than we do. It seems to get all the way in. You know, so for my sister, she loves wearing ridiculous colored clothes and outfits and and she loves the attention she gets for it. And you tell her how beautiful she looks. It's thank you. You know, she receives it. And I was in Long Island a couple of months ago. I may have shared the story with you, I think. And I was getting a coffee at the coffee shop down the street from where I get my Lyme disease treatments. And this woman walks in and she's special needs. And I could tell that she had been in the store a number of times. They knew who she was. Her name is Shante. And she walks into the store and she goes, I don't have any money today. My paycheck doesn't come until next week, but I just like to sit here if that's okay. And the coffee shop, which is called Soul Brew in Huntington, they were super sweet to her. And they were like, of course, sit down. You want a glass of water? And so she sat down with a glass of water. And I walked over to her. I was like, hey, Shantae, my, my name's Dominic. She's like, hi, Dominic. I'm like, would you like a coffee? I heard that you, you know, like, would you, would you like anything at all? And she goes, sure. And I'm like, what would you like? And she goes, I'd like a medium coffee with cream and three Splenda, you know, like super specific. And and, and no, one, no one orders a fucking medium coffee. Like she has a medium <laughs> coffee, right? And, and I was like, Shantae, is there anything else you'd want? Like she could take me for a ride. I would buy anything <laughs> on the menu for her at this point, right? And she's like, nope, just medium coffee, cream, three Splenda. So I went to the guy behind the counter who was, to this day, I still see him when I go out there. He's like, dude, that was really nice, you know? And I bought her the coffee and she said, thank you. And gave me the biggest smile, which was the repayment that I needed, a full reception of like my gift, not a, oh, I feel bad. You shouldn't have done that. It was just, thank you. And I walked out. And for the rest of my life, I'm going to remember that story. Oh, <laughs> so good. That that fully receiving and just letting this sink in. Man, that's, that's a lesson I'll, I'll carry with me forever. I love that. So good. Next episode here, and this is a DQ solo. I remember I, oftentimes when I was going through these topics, Dom, I could, especially the solo ones, because I wasn't part of those, I remember where I was at when I was listening to them. And this one, I was down in my garage. I was working on my concrete floor, trying to turn it from a gray concrete to a green concrete for some reason. I remember listening to this one. And this was how to call out misogyny with confidence. Oh, yeah. And this was just, this was so eloquently done on one of the hardest topics that we face as men, which is how do we stay connected with other men and at the same time set boundaries with the conversations that we're willing to have and not willing to have and standing up for what's right. And it's so hard to do because we're worried about losing our man card. We're, lur- we're worried about being kicked out of the, the men's club or, or the groups that we're part of. And so this was a masterclass in how to do that in, in a way that's, that's still loving and powerful, not an easy line to walk. Yeah. 
Dom, you already mentioned this one. This was the real talk about depression and suicide with mental health comedian Frank King. He was amazing. If I was to go back to listen to two of our episodes, I would listen to the, the Cycles one, the number one podcast that we have. And this would be the second one that I listened to again. Because this guy was, I think Dominic and I said a collective of three words the entire time. <laughs> um, and this guy, he told jokes about depression and suicide, but also gave us a full on education on what it's really like to be a normie, which is what he called us. And what he goes through as somebody that has depressive episodes and gave me so much more understanding and, and empathy for those that are going through, through that kind of um, episode. And he's a comedian that does keynote speeches for corporate audiences. Like he finds a way to talk about the most difficult and harrowing circumstances with just this release of tension. And some of his jokes are like, oh my God, can you, like, are you allowed to make that joke? Some of them are, are pretty intense, but he says, for me, they're catharsis given what he's gone through. So, I, and I also thought it was a very helpful playbook. He gave very specific ways to how to support the people in your life who are depressed or going through a depressive episode in a way that they'll, that feels supportive to them. Cause so many of us normies don't know how to approach or handle or say the, the right things to people with anxiety or depression. And he was exceptional at that. All right. Last one, Dom. And these are, these are hard to call down here, but this last one I'm going to talk about is, I don't know the topic or the actual title, but we just did this one and it's the episode on dopamine. That's part of this six, ah. part of this six, uh, six part series as we wrap up the podcast here of all of the things that we talked about, a lot of it is spiritual, right? We looked at the themes of mindset, of emotion, of sex, of relationships. And it feels like we, towards the end of our journey here, found the biological mechanism associated with a lot of the things that we've talked about on this podcast. And it made it all very real for me. So instead of just abstaining from masturbation, like, well, why? Like, what does that do? Right. Instead of abstaining from sweets and cookies, which has been a theme on this podcast, right? Like, Straight. what does that oh, do? God, yeah. When I, it's not just that I have to say no to something, but I'm actually getting something in return. And being able to feel where my energy has been at over the past year or so and where it's at on the precipice of making a big turn right now, it's had a huge, huge, huge impact on my life. And that in turn has changed my sleeping habits and has changed my eating habits and has changed all those things that provide that foundation for, for us on going on this inner work journey. So that from a, an important standpoint was really big. Great. Uh, and I, I can't believe we have gone an hour and a half into this episode, the final episode that you're in. And this is the first reference that we've made to you and being the cookie monster. <laughs> right. Because that has been a recurring theme for four years, Brian's trials and tribulations with, you know, his urges and impulses around cookie consumption. It's so true. I see, I see a good looking homemade cookie and it's just, but I tell you what, man, I feel more in control of that than I ever have in my life. And that feels really good. Yeah, I believe Please that. don't send cookies. Because <laughs> that could change on a dime. <laughs> I swear to God, Becca's mom likes to, likes to tempt that and, and test that on, on occasion. So, well, brother. I feel like we we did it. I feel like we we covered all that we'd hoped to today. This is this this will go down as the uh, the longest episode, I guess. This is a long one. We did do a three part series with Daryl Davis, which was one of my favorite experiences. The black man who has got. I didn't mention that one. That one is in my top. However many I listed off, that one is in there. Yeah. Oh my uh, god. Put it on the list. And and the sorry, <laughs> we're gonna make this longest episode ever even longer for <laughs> just one second because it's worth it. That three-part series with Daryl Davis opened my eyes to someone that is able to take time and to listen to another type of person that wants him dead. Yeah. Every single time I don't want to hear somebody's perspective on something or I totally disagree with it, that is the, the podcast that I go back to and I say, wait, if he can do that, if he can sit down, if a black man can sit down with a KKK member and try to understand their perspective, I can certainly sit here and talk about Trump or talk about whatever other topic that I have a major disagreement on, right? I can do that too. And that was absolutely on the top, top 10 list. Yeah. And what was thrilling for me about that was I got to do it in person. You know, I reached out to him. He was cordial, rented a, like a, an interview space. 
and he brought this big duffel bag of all the KKK paraphernalia that these 200 Klansmen had given to him after they relinquished their robes and hoods through their friendships with him. And so I got a chance to see all the swastikas, all the you know wizard gear. It was surreal and almost a little bit scary and spooky, but that was an all-timer. I'm going to take all of the episodes that you just gave, Bri. I'm going to put them into a Spotify playlist. I'm going to title it The Great Man Within, Brian's Favorite Episodes. Amazing. So like I just said, man, we uh, we did it. We're here at the, the finale, at the finish line of at least your and my journey together on the show. And I can't help but but think too, man, you know, over these last four years, you and I were in a men's group together for four years, group of eight of us. You know, that came to an end for me, our journey, when I left last year. This podcast is coming to a close. You know, this was another journey that we were on and that's ending. And the Great Man Mastermind is coming to a close in its current iteration. And you're undecided if you're going to be a part of that journey for the next year ahead. So as it stands today, man, like these last four years where we have been intricately intertwined multiple times a week on a number of different fronts, on a number of different adventures, we're, we're looking at a possibility of all of that space being completely cleared and not having a shared journey to go on in 2023. And so I haven't really fully let that sink in yet. You know, the emotions haven't started to come up yet for me around that, but they will. And I think I could see you getting a little emotional here as, as we're talking about it, but um, I, I don't know how many friendships have what we've been blessed to have, especially as men in their late thirties going into the forties, um, which tends to be the time of life where most men get really isolated. And, you know, you and I have come together in such an intense and beautiful and loving way that these four years, which is kind of like, you know, where people spend four years in college, we spent our four years in Brian Dom university and it's such a gift because I never saw anything like this modeled from anyone in their forties growing up. And we created what we wanted. Um, and I'll forever be grateful for that man. And I'll be forever be grateful for you in this period of time in our life. Haven't had a, a good cry on the uh, podcast in a while. So <laughs> what, what better way to, to end this thing, man? Um, yeah, I'm tearing up over here. And, uh, you, you know, you talked about I me mean, having the last word here. And I'm feeling tons of sadness right now, as you can hear in my voice. Um, what you can't hear is the immense gratitude that I feel in my heart. And um, that's gratitude to, to you, Dom for being the one to say hey let's go do this thing let's go let's go let's go play in this arena that we haven't played in before <laughs> you know and, and and doing the lion's share of the work to make that happen and make that a reality and also being a mentor for me as i as i go on my journey i mean i was a you know a co-host and sidekick on on this podcast but as you mentioned we've been through a lot more together than just the podcast and then, man that's been it's been so great having a leader in that area. And it makes me feel ready to lead others too. And so I, I feel a lot of gratitude towards that. And, and we'll miss the fun times. I, I look forward to, there's very few meetings that I, I have to attend regularly that I look forward to every single time. And this podcast has been one of those. I look forward to it every single time. And uh, I'm really proud of the work that we put into this and what we produce and, and put into the world. So I feel a lot of gratitude uh, right now. Um, the other thing I feel a lot of gratitude for are the listeners and the feedback, some of those examples that you gave today. But some of those listeners also happen to be friends of mine. And this podcast opened up conversations with those friends. And those friendships have entered new dimensions that I hadn't had before. They didn't know that I was even on this journey doing this work. I don't, I'm, I'm not too active on social media. So this was my, uh, this was my like pretty much one and only public outlet for the work that we, that we do. And also my family, my family, while they definitely didn't always like the topics that we talked about, <laughs> it was certainly something they could ask about. 
and say, hey, how's Dominic doing? You know, and that's, that's, that, that, yeah, that puts you in a really rare and special category in our family. And, and they, they can appreciate that. So I'm, uh, I'm really appreciative of, of our time together, uh, what we've produced, and all the subsequent conversations that this podcast has, has initiated. So thank you uh, all to the listeners. And um, for the last time, this is Brian signing out. Hey, did you get something of value out of this podcast? If so, I'm going to ask you a favor. Would you be so amazing as to go over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a rating and a review? Your ratings and reviews can show someone who's just discovered our podcast for the first time that we are worth listening to. And that way we can reach a wider audience. So please head over to Apple Podcasts, leave us a rating and review. You rock. You rock.